it was the worst outbreak of violence on the Pine Ridge Indian Reservation since the 71-day siege at Wounded Knee two years ago. It was kind of tense because uh, the American Indian uh, movement did go uh, to Pine Ridge, or uh, came to uh, Pine Ridge from, uh, went to Pine Ridge from uh, New Mexico. The plan was to go back, to go to a safe area, gather enough arms and ammunition and go back to Pine Ridge and have a war, have a war. Uh, we knew that uh, there was a large buildup uh, of, of, of people uh, from the American Indian Movement. And on the evening of the 25th, the two agents went out uh, in, I think it was in the Ambassador uh, automobile, and they were looking for uh, Jimmy Eagle. One of the places they went to was this Jumping Bull area, Jumping Bull Hall, Jumping Bull Compound. They went to that area and they were looking for Eagle. They talked to people there and were told that Eagle had been in the area, but that he wasn't there now. Yesterday's incident took place some 10 miles away, south of the town of Oglala. Two of them, and one was Cor and one was Williams, the, the two agents that got murdered, were traveling back onto the reservation and they, and they passed a vehicle which we believed to be a, a scout uh, kind of vehicle. And they thought that they saw in the vehicle Jimmy Eagle, whom they had a, a, a felony warrant for. Uh, and they turned and followed uh, that, that vehicle. FBI agents approached a house just before noon with the intention of serving arrest warrants for assault. Suddenly, gunfire burst out of the house and nearby bunkers, apparently automatic weapons. Two agents were killed, identified as Jack Kohler, 28, of Colorado Springs, and Ronald Williams, also 28, of Glendale, California. My understanding is they drove in past that white house over there and went down between those hills. They took up position right down there. Most of our, all of our people were over here. Uh, when they got to about the middle of the field, the other vehicle with three uh, people in it, three men in it, got out. Uh, brought out uh, weapons, heavy weapons, long-range weapons, an AR-15, which is the uh, civilian side of a uh, military uh, M-16, an M-1, World War I and Korea type, uh, and another weapon, and started shooting at them. And they are in the center of this open area. Um, no fire, no fire was coming from over there, and I couldn't understand why they didn't just pull around and drive back out. The agents had said on the radio, it looks like they're going to stop, it looks like they're getting out, they may shoot at us, uh, we've been hit. Did you fire at those agents, Kohler and Williams? I shot in their direction, yes. You did shoot in their direction? Yeah. yeah. Did you know they were FBI agents? No, I didn't have any idea who they were. I was just responding to the fire. You don't know who fired the first shot? No, I have no idea who fired the first shot, and I don't, personally, I don't feel it matters. We felt at that time that we were at war. Common sense tells you what the FBI was up to. What you're talking about is two guys coming in with service revolvers, you stop a vehicle, you get out, you're intending to find out if your subject is in that vehicle, and these guys on this Indian reservation, without knowing what they're up against, are going to start blazing off at 200 yards with those service revolvers? They just stayed there. They didn't, you know, we, could, we, could, we knew they were shooting at us. We could see them every once in a while pop up and shoot, you know, a while pop up and shoot. And then they would disappear behind our cars again, you know. When the shooting started, others came from the camp, and now we have six or seven people shooting at the agents. Very quickly, they were injured, uh, seriously. There were uh, over 125 holes in the agent's cars. The ground was chewed up by the fire that was directed at these two defenseless agents. I was right here, and uh, the two individuals that I was firing on and, and whom were firing on me were located about 100 to 150 yards from us. The two FBI agents? That's correct. How far were you away from where the agents were at? How far were you located? The camp? Mm -hmm. Oh, I don't know what that is, about a quarter of a mile, I suppose. About a quarter of a mile. Yeah, there was some shells hit, that, hit the side of the building. Uh, so I know they were shooting at me. Yeah. And you shot back? Yeah. Did you hit anybody? No, nobody was ever hit. Nobody was never wounded, shot, hit, hurt where I was shooting at. No, nobody was ever hit. Nobody was never wounded, shot, hit. Police sources 
said the agents may have survived the initial gunfire, only to be executed later. So with those cars down there, at, at the center of all that, you as a leader never, never went down to see what was going on? Right. You never saw the bodies? Nope. As I was with him every step of the way. When we went uh, up to the cars... Did you see the agents dead? Uh, yeah. You did see them dead? Yeah. Well, actually, I mean, I... I yeah, I get, you know, I knew they got killed. I heard they got killed. I knew they got killed. Jack Kohler was shot, mortally wounded, and knocked unconscious. Williams was also hit. He took off his shirt to make a, a tourniquet for Kohler's arm, and there's two bullet holes in the shirt, so he'd already been hit himself. Apparently was holding his right hand up to shield himself from the assailants who came forward, and as they shot him, they shot him directly through the hand, blowing part of it away into his head, killing him. And either before that or after that, Jack Colter, who was laying on the ground dying, is shot twice in the head, killing him. Police and FBI agents sealed off the area. Throughout the day, special assault squads of FBI men were flown in to assist in the effort to take the house and the unknown number of Indians inside. Then last night, there was another heavy exchange of fire. One Indian was shot dead. The rest of the Indians escaped. It was at this point that the bodies of the two agents were recovered. Basically, what they found is two guys lying face down beside Jack Kohler's bureau auto. The automobile is, it looks like a sieve. Both of them have their, their, their faces shot off. I mean, they're not recognizable people anymore. This morning, hundreds of FBI agents and state and local police have begun the search for the killers. The, the general investigation that followed, I think, was probably as intense as the FBI has ever done in its history. Uh, you know, the defense are correct in that. Uh, obviously, when agents are murdered, that's given the very top priority, and it was. Somebody literally blew their heads off. Yes. Did you see that or happen? No, I did not. No. That's what you're convicted of doing? Yes. Did you do it? No. No. I didn't kill those agents. I didn't see who killed those agents. And if I did know, I, I'm not telling. But I don't know. That's the do point. Do you know who killed the two FBI agents? I can't tell you. I can't tell you because there's a number of different reasons. So you know, but you can't or you won't tell me who they are? Um, yes. Leonard, do you know who killed those agents? No. You don't? No. Nope. That's bullshit. The evidence is absolutely incontrovertible of his involvement in that, in those double homicides. I've described Leonard Peltier as a mad dog. He is truly a mad dog. Mr. Peltier was basically a thug. That's all he ever was. That's all he'll ever be. He basically is a murdering thug. You know, I'm not a, I'm not a mad dog killer. I'm not a thug. I'm a human being that's uh, been wronged. And uh, that's what I'm trying to tell the world. That's what I'm trying to tell the world tell the world. Anything to dramatize Leonard's situation. If a bullet from your rifle had killed one or both of those agents, would you have considered yourself a murderer? No.